So I find it very interesting how with all the teams fighting for the playoffs, it's actually the two undefeated teams that have made moves this week, with the Patriots getting Mohamed Sanu, and now Emmanuel Sanders getting traded to the San Francisco 49ers in exchange for a third and fourth round pick. Although they're also getting back a fifth round pick, so it's kind of like you're just moving back a little bit with one round of your picks and then also giving up a third. That's basically what the trade is. I find it to be an interesting move. For one thing, I hear some people saying this could potentially be the 49ers' true number one receiver. I'm not quite sure I'd go that far, but I do like Sanders. I think he's a pretty good player. And the reality is, giving up just a little bit more than a third round pick, in my opinion, it's absolutely worth it. You're trying to win a Super Bowl here, it's okay to give up some future assets to try to be successful in the future. I just think it makes sense. They do already have some receiving talent, With you know, you do have Pettis, you also have Jalen Hurd, who should be coming back from his injury, and also Debo Samuel. You're not without receiving talent whatsoever, and of course, you have to mention their great receiving tight end, George Kittle. But I do feel like Sanders is going to add something to this 49ers team, I think is a pretty good player player and so let's just jump into the breakdown. What I like about Sanders is that he's just a good route runner. He's been in the league for a minute now and so he definitely can run routes pretty well. And so I do feel like that could very much help the San Francisco 49ers. Like if you take a look at this play for example, what's going to happen is it's going to be going up against a cover one blitz. So in a cover one blitz, it means five people are rushing the passer, five people are playing man, and then there's one safety who's deep. So because of this, it means that the middle of the field is going to be wide open, which is good for Denver here since Sanders is running a route just straight over the middle. Just try to get open. Pretty simple and it can definitely work against this type of coverage. But of course, it's man coverage. So Sanders has to make sure that he wins his own one-on-one -on -one match. Jump. That's kind of the dilemma. That's why you run man coverage is because you trust your corners to, to be able to beat their receivers. That's kind of what you do here. But one thing you're going to see that's very good about Sanders is really just his first step. Watch how he just instantly goes closer to the bottom half of the screen than his assigned man. He just quickly takes a step in and at this point it's game over. Since he's cutting over the middle and there isn't going to be a linebacker taking away the middle of the field, now Flacco knows Sanders is going to be open. He's able to hit Sanders and that's just an easy completion right there. Honestly, it doesn't get too much easier than that, but at the same time, the reason why it was so easy is because it was set up by just a great first step by Sanders. You make one quick good play and that's it. That's all you need. Sometimes just something that small right when the ball is snapped can be the difference in you getting open or you not getting open. And in that instance, it was the difference in him getting easily open without really too much difficulty whatsoever. There was also this play where it's going to be a cover three zone and that's Sanders' route. So, you know, it's trying to get into a gap in coverage right in the middle of the field. Not a bad route whatsoever. This is actually something you will see San Francisco run quite a lot. So this actually could be a little bit telling of how good can he be in these types of routes because San Francisco, you better believe, will ask him to try to attack that middle of the field. That's where they love to attack. They love to run play action. They love to get, oftentimes, George Kittle over the middle, but they'll use receivers over the middle a lot. They love to attack that middle of the field, and pretty much every play, there's somebody running about like that, and in this play, for Denver, it's going to be Emmanuel Sanders. And so after this ball snapped, what I love is look at how long it takes for him to actually give away what he's doing. You know, he's running straight up the middle and not giving away that he is cutting over the middle of the field. So again, for that defender who's kind of covering him right here, I mean, look at how far deep he is. In fairness, this is not man coverage, this is a cover three zone, so he has to make sure that at all times he's staying further deep and further towards the sideline of Sanders. I would actually say that he's doing a pretty good job of covering on this one, but at the same time, he just isn't going to be able to knock this ball away because Sanders already has that inside leverage, largely just because he did a great job of not giving anything away on his route. And also another reason that was so key is now Flacco can fit that ball in between the two linebackers. It was actually a bit of a low throw, but Sanders was able to go down and make that catch. And it was just a well-executed play, mostly by Sanders. He didn't give anything away on his route, which is the key thing. Flacco probably could have made a better throw, but he was still able to make an athletic catch, so that didn't really hurt them too much. And because of the good route running, he was able to make that window as large as possible, so even though Flacco didn't make a great throw, there was still enough of a window that it was still able to be fit through, and Sanders was able to make the catch. So yeah, he does the little things well, and the little things turn into big things, and this play is a great example of that, where it's going to be a cover two zone, and for Sanders, his route seems relatively inconsequential. I mean, it's a quick route, just underneath all of the linebackers, so you'd think, best case scenario, you're gaining five yards here. 
it's a second down and 10 situation, so that's not the end of the world. I mean, you would like to gain five yards and then make it a third down and five, so you that's kind of what this route is for. It's usually not going to go for a first down, but can at least go for some yards. But again, what I love about this route from Sanders is watch how he starts this route off. Watch how, I mean, talk about giving absolutely nothing away. At this point, you totally think that he could be doing anything. He could be cutting in any direction. He could be going straight, and so... For a linebacker who would be potentially running up to try to make this tackle, he still is playing a little bit soft here. And again, in fairness, that's kind of where he's supposed to be. He's trying to make sure that he doesn't allow a first down on this play, so that's why he's playing a little bit far off. But at the same time, if Sanders had already started to cut, then he would know that Sanders is cutting and he should run in to try to make a play. But due to Sanders' patience, he didn't know that. Sanders is able to make the catch, and then he accelerates so quickly, he still ends up getting the first down. So that's kind of that combination of being a smart player, but still being athletic enough to find a way to get the first down. I mean, that acceleration in open space, it's not easy to do, especially when you're getting up there in age. I mean, he's 32, which for receivers is definitely at the tail end of their career, but at the same time, I mean, he still is playing at a high level, especially with that acceleration. His acceleration certainly hasn't gone away. And so the fact that he has that veteran experience along with just being an athletic player still, I mean, it makes him definitely a threat. And this play maybe is the perfect example of that, where it's going to be a cover three zone once again. And this time for Sanders, well, he's running a go route here. This is a big play type situation. But again, you just got to love his route here. Watch how right when he approaches that Raiders player who's in charge of covering the zone furthest to the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Watch how he's just going to fake a little bit as though he's going to the bottom half of the screen. Watch how he's faking as though he's cutting here. He's acting as though this could be an out route, which is actually the perfect time to do this. Because if you look at the first down marker, he's just short of it right now, which is typically where you would want to run an out route. I mean, it's a second down and 10, not a third down. So you don't need to get the first down on this play. So that does mean that that potentially the out route could be a little bit shorter or a little bit further deep so it's not a guarantee to that Raiders defensive back that that's where he's going to cut but it also does seem logical that you could definitely have someone cut right past the first down marker don't even have to worry about a third down just try to get the first down on this play and well Sanders is going to try to get the first down but not in the way that, that Oakland player is expecting watch how he just then cuts back further deep is able to get plenty open Flacco hits him and they get a huge gain on that one that's not easy to do, you know? I mean, that's a good move right there to fool an opposing player, but then also just to have the athletic ability to, once you get that step, to maintain that step and even get another step just of your skill. So now you're wide open as opposed to just barely open. I think there's plenty of guys in the league that wouldn't even try to move like that. They would have just tried to run deep, but that wouldn't have been great. For Sanders, he tried to move, he executed it perfectly, got wide open, and was able to have a huge gain. So plays like that definitely are the kind of thing that Sanders could potentially bring to this 49ers football team. But one thing I was really interested in seeing how he would do is just in play action. Because we know San Francisco, they love to run play action. So how can he do in that? Well, the answer is very well. He's actually very good in these types of routes. And here's how this play is going to work. We're, once again, cover three zone. And for Flacco, he's going to fake a handoff and then try to hit Sanders who's running that route right there. This is something right out of the 49ers playbook. This is something that Jimmy Garoppolo will be doing constantly and has been doing constantly and probably will do once Emmanuel Sanders gets there trying to hit Emmanuel Sanders. One thing again, just I know I keep bringing this up, but it's important. Watch the beginning of Sanders' route here. I mean, if you're a defender, you have no way of telling what Sanders is doing here. And honestly, to me, it looks like he's getting ready to cut down to the bottom half of the screen. That's what it looks like to me. Or perhaps potentially he's just getting ready to block. There's several things he could be doing, but he's not doing either, at least not right yet. Instead, he's going to cut back to the top half of the screen. He gets open, and even though Flacco doesn't make a great throw, he is still able to make a very impressive catch. Watch. This angle will be a better angle of it. It's just really a great play by Sanders. First, to just have the wherewithal to kind of not just run straight to the left side of the screen the way you wanted to. You know, he waited a second. But then also, when the throw wasn't great, largely just because Flacco was on the run, he was still able to make a dive and grab and make the catch and allowed them to get the first down. I mean, that's a really good play by Sanders. I don't think anybody is going to say that Emmanuel Sanders is Julio Jones out there. You know, he's just not. That's not what they're getting with Sanders. But they're getting a guy who can consistently do his job on every play. He's a role player and he's also just a veteran presence in a team that has a lot of young players. So I think having a receiver that you can just sort of rely on, you know, if it's a third down and three, you can just trust that he won't be dropping that catch most likely. That's just kind of a great thing to have on a team that is trying to compete for a championship. 
and for a relatively low price, just a little bit more than a third round pick, I think it's worth it. I'd say go for it, see what you can do, try to win a championship this year, because why not? Super Bowl windows tend to close a lot quicker than you realize, so if you have an opportunity, go for it, and that's what San Francisco is doing here with this trade for Sanders. One last thing that should be mentioned about Sanders is he just has like explosive cuts. The way he cuts is just so seamless, and this will be a perfect example of it where it's going to be just a one-on-one -on -one matchup, but just him going up against the defender right there. Pretty simple. And for Sanders, he's actually running an out route, which is a pretty solid way you can beat this coverage, especially with a single safety deep. This definitely can be a pretty good thing for Sanders. But again, what you see right when this ball is snapped is he's just running as quick as he can down the field. He's not worrying about the cut at this point. He's just trying to get as much further down the field as he possibly can. So at this point, he actually does kind of have a step on his assigned man right here. But at the same time, keep in mind, he's running an out route here. He's not running a go route. So he's actually running the first part of this route like it's a go route. And he's actually doing a, such a good job that he has a step a little bit. There wouldn't be a huge window, especially with the safety deep. There'd actually pretty much be no window. But... At the same time, it looks like it could be open. So therefore, if you're a defensive back, you have to make sure that you're just keeping pace with Sanders. But then, by the time Sanders does cut, he just gets wide open. They get a huge gain, and I mean, things like that is what makes him an effective player, and that's why the 49ers decided to trade for him. I think there's several ways this could go. I could see Sanders ending up being their number one receiver. I could also see Sanders ending up being just a, a number three receiver, someone that just comes in on certain snaps. But either way, whether it's going to be more of just a role player type position or whether he's going to have a huge role in that San Francisco 49ers offense, I do feel like he will add some benefits to that 49ers team.